Hello again, boys and girls. It's Mr. Wassman, and today we are going to apply our understanding of fractions and mixed numbers uh, to data interpretation uh, through the use of a line plot graph. We are in our math journals on pages 174 and 175, Unit 5, Lesson 9, and it's entitled Backpack Weights. So let's take a look at the story problem that uh, gets us started. This is a fourth grade class at Hillside Elementary School used a spring scale to weigh their full backpacks and recorded the weights to the nearest quarter pound. So as you can see, we have a table here and there are uh, a few dozen measurements. And what we need to do is we need to take all that raw data and organize it in a way so that it makes sense to us. And the way we're going to do that is uh, taking each of the measurements and charting them on this line plot graph, which is basically uh, a grid of like graph like paper above a number line. Okay, so as you can see in the upper left hand corner, we have a measurement of four pounds. So, the, what I would do is I would first take that measurement of four pounds, and on the uh, graph paper, I would fill in a square above the number, like so, and then I would take pencil or whatever, and I would cross out the fact that I've charted the number four. And then I would move along uh, across the table, charting the, uh, the measurements that I find. So like six and a half pounds, I would take that between six and seven pounds on my chart, and I would look at the little hash marks, and six and a half would fall right here. So I'd fill that one in. And then all I would do is go through the table at the top, cross out each measurement, like say for seven and a half, and then I would shade in the corresponding square above the number line, like so. Now there are a lot of measurements, so it's going to be very tedious for you to watch me fill in squares one at a time and talk about them. So with the magic of editing, Voila! I have completed my line plot graph with 26 different squares filled in corresponding to the 26 measurements that you see in the table. Now as you can see on the line plot graph, there were some measurements that popped up more than once, meaning that uh, more than one child's backpack weighed the same. And there are other measurements that uh, did not rank at all along the graph. So now what we do is we use this graph to help us interpret these questions on pages 174 and 175. So, for example, question number one, it says, how many students carry a backpack that weighs five and a quarter pounds? Okay, so when I look at my graph, I can see there are three squares that are colored in above five and a quarter. So, my answer would be three students. How many students carry a backpack that weighs more than seven and a half pounds? Well, that's... Uh, is going to require a little addition or uh, counting because seven and a half pounds is right here. And I need to count how many squares were colored in after that mark, that seven and a half mark. So more than, okay? So when I look at my graph, I can see there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, starting with seven and three quarters and ending in nine and three quarters. So there are eight uh, backpacks that weigh more than seven and a half pounds. So there are eight students that have that weight. Okay. Let's skip ahead to a couple of problems on page 175. As you can see, uh, the units are uh, listed next to the blank. Okay. And the first several problems. Uh, say students as the unit of measurement. But starting with number four, they kind of switch things up because they want you to interpret the data differently. For example, number four says which weight is carried by the greatest number of students. So when I look at that graph, I can see that there are four squares that are filled in, okay, 
over seven and a quarter. So instead of writing four for the number of students, I'm gonna write the measurement, which is seven and one quarter pounds, okay? The same is true for uh, problem number six. How much does the heaviest backpack weigh? So we are looking for the uh, largest number within the range of weights recorded. And that would be this one right over here, because it's at the uh, right hand side of our number line, and that's nine and three quarters pounds. Okay? So as we are looking at the graph and uh, thinking about the questions that are being posed to us, we have to pivot between am I being asked about the number of students who had the weight or the, the, the weight itself. Okay, let's do one more. Problem number 10 has three parts. Okay, and this is where we start to use our understanding of adding and subtracting uh, mixed numbers and fractions to this data interpretation. Number 10 sa A says that what is the combined weight of all the backpacks weighing more than four and a half pounds and less than five and a half pounds? Okay, there's a little bit to this problem here. So combined weight, so that tells me that I am going to add, okay, and I'm going to add all the backpacks that weigh more than four and a half pounds and less than five and a half pounds. Okay, so let's go back to our graph. More than four and a half, less than five and a half. So four and a half is right here. Five and a half is right here. So what we are interested in looking at is this range of measurements right here. And as you can see, there are one, two, three, four squares filled in. Now, what we need to do is we need to take the four measurements that those four squares represent and add them together. So we have a measurement of four and three quarters, and then we have three measurements of five and one quarter, okay? So over here in the margins, I'm going to set up an addition problem with four add-ins. I'm going to add four and three-fourths, five and one-fourth, and then two more five and one-fourths. And as you notice, I set them up vertically so that I could line up my place values. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is count my fourths or add my fractional parts. So I have uh, four fractions with the same denominator, so I don't have to do anything to the denominator except write it down here because I'm adding parts. Okay, I'm counting fourths, so I have three, four, five, six fourths. Okay, so I'll put that there. We're going to need to do a little regrouping here in a minute. Then I'm going to add my whole number pounds. Okay, so four plus five plus five plus five. Well, three fives is fifteen. Fifteen plus another four would give me 19. So my raw data added together is 19 and 6 fourths. Well, I can't have a mixed number with a improper fraction, so what I have to do is I need to change that improper fraction up. Okay, so I know that 6 fourths is the same as saying 1 and 2 fourths, because if I were to say, draw a quick little diagram, some very uh, ungeometric circles here, and if I were to divide them each into fourths, right, if I were just to shade in six of them, like so. One, two, three, four, five, six. I've completed one full circle and half of another circle. So six fourths is the same as saying one and two fourths or one and a half, if you want to uh, convert that fraction to the lowest common denominator. Okay. So what that means is I need to reinterpret 6 fourths into 1 and 2 fourths. And then I'm going to add that to my whole number amount of 19. So 
I now have 19 pounds and 1 and 2 fourths pounds, which added together would give me a total of 20 and 2 fourths, or you can call it 20 and a half, 20 and a half pounds. So I put that total right here, the combined weight is 20 and 2 fourths pounds. Okay. Now, problem 10b asks you to compare that to the combined weight of the backpacks weighing more than 6 pounds and less than 7 pounds. So you would do the same process of counting how many uh, backpacks uh, fall within that smaller range, and then you would take the actual measurements and add them together, okay, and then uh, determine which uh, amount was more. Okay, and then 10C asks you how much more or less. Now you're going to give me the difference between the two amounts. Okay, so that is the, uh, the beauty of a line plot graph. We take a bunch of raw data and then we sort it and organize it in a way that we can uh, do something with that information. Um, we collect information all the time about stuff and we need to do something with that information. Uh, organizing it in this way makes solving all of these problems a whole lot simpler. Okay? Uh, I hope this uh, video was helpful to you and helped you figure out how to A, create a line plot graph, and B, solve problems regarding the data of that line plot graph. If you still have questions or are still confused about the process, or if your line plot graph does not look like anything like mine, um, you need to talk to your math teacher. Okay, they will be happy to help you uh, figure this stuff out. Hey, that's their job. Okay, uh, until we meet again, friends, I hope you have a good day. Good luck with this assignment, and uh, talk to you soon. Thanks.